The Election Commission of Pakistan has announced that general elections will be held in the last week of January 2024, exceeding President Arif Alvi's suggested November 6 cut-off date by over two months. Delimitation of constituencies will begin on September 27, with the final list issued on November 30. The announcement caused a drop in Pakistan's dollar-dominated government bonds and the country faces a funding crunch, likely requiring IMF support after the election. A meeting with political parties is scheduled to discuss a draft code of conduct. Article 224 mandates elections within 90 days of National Assembly dissolution, but Section 17.2 of the Elections Act requires delimitation after each census. The ECP has sought assistance from executive authorities for election preparations, citing Article 220 of the Constitution. Despite President Alvi's suggestions, the ECP holds the authority to announce the election date. In Karachi's Martin Road area, a group of individuals vandalized an Ahmadi place of worship, marking the fifth such incident in nine months. Around 20 to 25 people broke into the building, damaging minarets and windows before fleeing. Police arrived at the scene attempting to obtain CCTV footage to identify the suspects, but the area had no power at the time. The spokesperson for the Jamaat e Ahmadiyya in Pakistan reported that the attackers not only damaged property, but also demolished two remaining minarets. This attack involving around 8 to 10 extremists resulted in significant damage to the worship place's belongings and humiliation of the Ahmadiyya community's founder and leader. Efforts were underway to file a first information report. Such incidents have occurred repeatedly following for stern action against the perpetrators. India has taken measures to reduce Canadian diplomatic staff in the country and has halted visa services amid a growing dispute over the murder of six separatists Hardeep Singh Majar in Canada. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has urged India to treat allegations of Indian involvement in Majar's killing seriously, which has led to diplomatic expulsions and a strong denial from India. This conflict has strained relations between Canada and India. India has called for parity in diplomatic presence and hinted at reducing Canadian staff in India. Additionally, they have temporarily stopped handling visa applications from Canada due to perceived security threats. Canada's High Commission in India has announced adjustments to diplomat numbers in response to threats against the staff on social media. The flood disaster in Libya's city of Derna, triggered by a flash flood after Mediterranean Storm Daniel, has displaced over 43,000 people, according to the International Organization for Migration. This catastrophe, which killed thousands and led to entire neighborhoods being raised, has an official death toll of more than 3,300. But international aid groups estimate that the actual count could be much higher, with up to 10,000 people missing. The IOM highlights urgent need for the displaced, including food, drinking water, and mental health and psychological support. Mobile and internet services have been restored after a two-day disruption caused by protests during which residents blamed authorities for the high death toll. Libya is still divided between different government faces, challenges in infrastructure maintenance, and the dams that failed during the floods had developed cracks in the 90s. As the investigation into the tragedy progresses, survivors now face the threat of disease outbreaks due to contaminated water and sanitation issues. The UN warns of a potential second devastating crisis in the flood hit areas. IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva has urged Pakistan to increase taxes on the wealthy and protect the poor amid soaring inflation. Pakistan's year-on inflation for August reached 27.4%, leading to protests over high electricity bills. The government initially promised relief but later cited IMF commitments. Georgieva, after meeting Pakistan's caretaker Prime Minister Anwar al at the UN General Assembly, emphasized the need for strong policies to ensure stability, revenue collection, and protection for vulnerable. Carter also highlighted their commitment to economic stability. The IMF approved a $3 billion bailout program for Pakistan, providing immediate relief to Saudi Arabia and UAE deposits boost to foreign reserves. He and Carter proposed measures that would given to support struggling economies, including creating an investment entity, regulatory frameworks for private investment, and collaboration with UN offices to develop SDG related projects.